Kia ora koutou, you're listening to Radio Kidnappers and this is Made in New Zealand where we interview artists, musicians, authors um, who are local to us and national. And today we have Judith McKinnon from Hastings District Libraries. Uh, there's a lot more to Judith than just uh, being a librarian. And she's going to talk to us first of all about Wine and Book Lovers Night, which is coming up. When is that, Judith? I've forgotten the date. Um, that's on the 24th, which is a Wednesday, 24th of November. Yeah. So it's one week away or? Yeah, a week and a half. Yeah, I can't remember what it was today, the 12th, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so what happens at Wine and Book Lovers Night? Um, well, it's a bit of a Havelock North institution. It used to be the book publishers night and we used to have publishers coming in talking about the new books for Christmas. And since publishers don't really do that sort of thing anymore, we just took over the job and uh, we run it with um, a well-known local um, bookseller. <laughs> <laughs> Which this year just happens to be Wardini yes, Books. <laughs> absolutely. And so we put on a, um, a slideshow of new books and people get to jot down the books that they want to buy and there are sales available. We also offer a glass of wine or juice and some nibbles and uh, there's spot prizes and uh, best of all I think is the author talk which mm. is about halfway through so we usually bring in a new author each time um, who's talking about a new book. Who was it last year? Um, last year we had uh, Christina Sanders. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So I think we've interviewed on um, this programme before, actually, when she brought out Displaced. Yes. Yeah, which is an excellent book. I love that book. And so who is it this year? We've got Andreen Lowe. Um, she's a local indie author. She's actually published 15 titles, mm. which is pr a pretty good number. Um, she's uh, an ex comedian and she's been on the stage with Tereda and Mike King mm. and uh, so she's pretty funny humor runs through all her books and there's quite a diverse range of titles that she puts out she's got um, Chicklet set in the 70s and she's got these Marina Witch novels which is her latest series that she's just finished the ninth book for. Wow yeah. what happens in those? Um, I think it's a cozy mystery so um, Marina the marina, which is set at a marina, and I think it's Frankie B is her main character. Frankie um, is learning to be a witch, and she hasn't quite got her spells um, in order, but uh, somehow she manages not only to get to be a better witch, but uh, solve some mysteries uh, oh. along the way. Um, yeah, um, and then um, she's got Diet Veil, vale, which mm. is her standalone psycho thriller. Yeah, so the cosy mysteries. Um, th this is a thing that's coming up in fiction, isn't it? Yes. Cozy fiction. How do you describe that? Um, usually it's an amateur sleuth, um, and as opposed to, say, your police procedurals or gumshoe mysteries, there's, they're not so violent. They're a little bit like your old Agatha Christie um, kind of mysteries. There's a huge variety, though. You've got your historical ones set in an English country manner, mm. or you've got uh, someone running a craft group, and uh, there's somehow <laughs> <laughs> murders that happen, and people need to solve them. And yeah. it's always done by a bunch of old biddies over their knitting needles, or um, yeah. all sorts. Really, the, the variety is huge, but they are very popular. They're a comfort read, and, and people really like them. Yeah, and you find that that's quite a lot of, um, what do you call them? from the library, not withdrawals? Um, oh, I suppose uh, issues. <laughs> issues, thank <laughs> you. I was issues. like, what, what is that called? So you find that you're issuing quite a few of those? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Especially during these strange times, perhaps. I think so, yes. People Just don't the sort want... Well, I mean, don't you, people actually also like the other side of things, something a bit darker and bloodthirsty. It's quite good, <laughs> it makes you feel that your life's not so um, difficult after all. Yeah, actually, perspective is, is a really important thing, isn't it? Um, maybe like... Alexander McCall Smith, those Myra Motsway. Um, Absolutely. What are they called? Number one li ladies detective agency. Yes. That would fall within that. I quite like the idea of witches for grown ups because I'm presuming they're, they're grown up books yes, and yes, things witchy there's, ones. There's a bit of romance in there as well. Yeah. And, and lots of humour. Yeah. But Diet Vale, not so cosy. So that would be the flip side. No, no. She's yeah. really um, branched out there with something that's quite uh, gritty and. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think she's surprising. created um, a genre they're called body horror. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not for the faint-hearted. I think she's got that on the cover. Yeah. Yes. Not for the faint-hearted, which is good. We all need a challenge sometimes with our reading. So we're going to come along to Havelock North Library mm. on Wednesday the twenty-fourth. What time? 
time is that? Um, the doors open at 6.15 yep. and we sort of kick off around 6.30. Kick off is 6.30. And do you have to get a ticket? You do need to buy a ticket because with our COVID restrictions mm. at Level 2, we're just selling uh, around 40 tickets. So I would suggest if you want to come, get in early. And tickets from the library? Yes, um, all of the libraries, Havelock North, Hastings and Blacksmere, you can get a ticket from. Tickets from Hastings District Libraries and what, is it a fiver? It's only a fiver. Yeah. It's such good value. Yeah. And it's always been a fiver. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember that. I've been coming for a few years now. I yeah. always think it's a lovely night where just um, people of a like mind that want to read and are interested in stories get to come together and, and, and hear about stuff, that, new stuff that's going on. So um, the COVID contingency planning for that is quite detailed, I think, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Um, we've had to read the regulations and mm. figure out how to manage the event in the library. And uh, the good thing is we've got movable shelves, so we can move everything out to the walls and then we can space everybody out. Mm. So everyone will be sitting in a little private bubble of their own, or you can, if you're with a family group, then you can sit together. Mm. Um, the food will be um, in a, a little dish of its own, so everyone gets um, a little sampling. They, they get their glass, they have a look at the books, they sit down, and then they can uh, take their mask off and uh, have their drink and nibbles. That's really, really well thought through, and thank you for that, for keeping us all safe. Um, so that's going to be a great night, but, but Judith, you're a writer. Oh, well, yes, I am. Yeah, tell us, tell us about that. How long have you been, you know, doing that for? Um, well, on and off all my life. I used to work in publishing many years ago and I wrote some educational fiction and non-fiction for kids learning to read. And, um, and then I, I moved down here and there's something about the Hawke's Bay that's quite inspiring, the landscape, and just being in a new environment. Um, quite different from Auckland, where mm. I was brought up. So I, I just wanted to write a Hawke's Bay novel. Um, so... Uh, Last year I put out The Magpie Summer, which is um, a sort of women's fiction, slightly humorous, slightly romantic story about two people who are thrown together by a series of mishaps. One of them is um, hiding the secret that he had um, an, an accident, where a shooting accident with his uh, cousin and uh, ended up going to prison for it. And uh, Ellen, she's um, hiding the fact that she's a secret taxidermist. Ha -ha. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of taxidermy around at the time and I thought, I really must tap into that. But why, why taxidermy? Because I was talking to Gareth, um, Gareth Ward, my husband, author, who Judith knows quite well. Yes. And he said, yeah, Judith wrote this one and it was originally called The Mouse Nativity and there was a lot of taxidermy in it. So, why taxidermy? Many years ago, um, when I was working in publishing, we used to work with this um, illustrator. His name was Rodney McRae. And uh, as a little sideline, he did taxidermy. And I read a, a little article about his shop in Sydney. And in the window, and there was a picture of the window, um, was a, a nativity scene made with small animals. So a variety of animals. And it just stuck in my head. Um, he's actually a very well-known taxidermist now and does it as a, a fine art. And if you go online and look up Rodney McRae, it's, it's quite interesting, the stuff that he does. It's yeah. quite powerful. Gosh. Because it is an art and it's quite fascinating, isn't it? Because it does sort of... I suppose we're all intrigued by death because <laughs> that's what's going to happen to everybody. <laughs> and so to see... Things that are dead but still there is, is yeah. the fascination, isn't it, with taxidermy? I was just fascinated with the fascination around it because, yeah. you know, surprisingly I don't have a house full of stuffed animals. <laughs> but um, Yet. <laughs> it's always a possibility. But, you know, you do see a lot of it around, um, you know, even shops in, Hawks, in Hastings. Mm. It's, it's quite a big thing. And people around here go hunting and yeah, they put their trophies on display. My grandfather did a bit of taxidermy for a time. Yeah. It was one of those, uh, what do I do when I retire things? And he thought, taxidermy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Stop some dead things. Um, so what's Ellen in your story? What's Ellen's, how does she get into it? Well, she's an artistic sort of person and she's running away from a broken heart in the world of theatre where she worked um, and she comes home and ends up looking after her elderly father who's starting to lose the plot a little bit and um, they have a struggling cherry orchard and she does this one-off 
she thinks, nativity scene with mice for a um, friend's wedding. They're um, a gay couple that run a, a very outre interior design store and they just love it and they put it in the window of their shop and soon orders come rushing in. The next thing you know she's doing it for a living mm. and um, but she doesn't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, she just goes looking around for mice. I was going to say mouse homicide rates increase. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Well, fortunately, there's a very um, busy ginger cat at the ah, house. So. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't rip them up too much, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, that's absolutely fascinating. So, you, do you write every day? I try to. Um, life gets in the way sometimes, mm. but. Um, yeah, no, I'd really try to. I think it's really important to have that habit. And even if you just do a little bit um, after breakfast or in the evening, it, it just keeps the momentum going. And before you know it, you've built up, you know, a, a decent sized manuscript. Mm. Mm. So what kind of a writer are you? Because I know that everyone's got a, a different kind of process. Mm. You know, do you have to be in a specific place in the home or...? No, I, I like my um, laptop around and I just curl up with it wherever. But um, I like to do a lot of planning first, so mm. if I have a story I don't want to start it and think I don't know where the heck I'm going with this so um, I'll start something else. I mean I, I think if you're only doing a little bit a day then it's important to know what you're going to achieve that day mm. and, and yeah, just chip away at it. Yeah, so you're a planner. Definitely. And I do you, because I know some people have like mood boards and big pieces of paper or are you all digital? Pretty much all digital. Um, I use a program called Scrivener and ah. it gives you the opportunity to put things in folders such as your reference material, pictures. I like to have visual pictures of characters and settings and things. So I just you know, stick them in there. Um, yeah, and it's also really good for planning because you can set out your chapters and you can see it all at a glance or you can see the minutiae of what mm. you're working on chapter by chapter. Yeah, mm. Scrivener. Mm. So is that something that you buy? Yes, it's a, an online app. It's not very expensive, surprisingly yeah. not very expensive. And, and yeah, it takes a little bit of getting to know. And I have had a few mishaps with it and lost things. But oh, no. <laughs> now, now I've got it down to an art. Yeah, that's always been my... Um worry you know if I've got everything I'm very pen and paper as you can see yeah. <laughs> if I've got everything there I know exactly where it is um so where can we read your work how could we um, get hold of Magpie Summer right so that it's only an ebook but um I've I've spread it out wide so it's available at most of your ebook retailers yeah Kobo and Amazon and um, also it's on overdrive so you can read it through the library oh good mm. what's overdrive how, how's that different to Libby um, oh, Overdrive is the um, software company, I suppose, and Libby is the app that you use to access Overdrive. Mm. So Libby's great, isn't it? I oh, love it. It's yeah. so easy to use. Yeah, t tell us about that, because one of my next questions is, is what, what else is going on at the library that listeners might not know of? Because, I mean, I'm a bookseller. I have access mm. to books all the time. But when I'm driving or walking, I listen to audio books because... I always want to be catching up with the latest stories. So um, how do people access Libby? Right, so what you have to do is download the app and you can get that from your usual app store. Um, once you've got it, you just need to go into it and set up your profile and it means uh, typing in your library card number, mm -hmm. which is a very long number, I agree, but <laughs> actually some of us know our library cards off by heart. <laughs> you would be surprised. And, uh, and there's a PIN required or yeah. password. Once you've got it set up, then um, it's just easy. It gives you access to the catalogue. You scroll through and choose a book. Um, you can refine your selection by what kind of things you want to read, whether it's available now or if you're prepared to wait for it and put a hold on it. Um, yes, and then you, you can get e-books or audio books. There's junior titles as well for mm. kids. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I love the audio books as well. I've never used to listen to audiobooks until it was available now I can just put them on my phone and mm. go everywhere with it and I was talking to someone today and she says she has them on her hearing aid she's bluetoothed her hearing aids wow. to her phone and yeah she can be anywhere in the house and, and still listening and, and her phone's in the kitchen or yeah, in another room doing its thing that's incredible isn't it yeah, yeah the ways that we can access stories mm. through uh, modern technology that's great so what are the things, you know, I, I mean, I, I've just jotted down, I know that you have um, dyslexic 
titles and advice for dyslexic readers. That's right. Yeah. We have, um, and they are available with the e um, platforms as well. Um, I should say also, uh, as well as Libby, we've got two other e platforms. There's Wheelers, which we um, subscribe to separately, um, and we can put in whatever books that we like that we feel are missing from the other bigger collections. Mm. And we've got Olverscroft, which is uh, an audio book only. Um, app and they're, they're all apps and you can put them on your phone as well. Croft. Yes, so yeah, that has a lot of um, your traditional English titles, Anne Cleves, um, oh. Lee Childs on there. Mm. Yeah, so some of them you might not um, find available on Libby but they're there on Croft. Mm. And it's all free isn't it? Yeah, it's all free. Um, with um, Libby I think you can also choose your fonts and you can choose dyslexic fonts. I did it by mistake and I thought oh what's happened and um, mm. so yeah it's 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 great for that and we've also been adding to our dyslexic collection of books as well mm. so you'll see them they've got a little black spot on the spine um, and they've got a particular kind of font and the paper color is creamy so it makes it much easier to read yeah and thicker paper I think as well so yeah. it doesn't sort of bleed through to the other side yes anything that can confuse the letters and make mm. them jump around I suppose um, what, what else? What else have I missed? Um, right, so with COVID we've really expanded the e-collection but we've also um, been promoting our Books at Home service as well. So if you know of anyone who's at home and can't get to the library and, and some people do feel a little bit nervous these days of mm. getting out, yep. um, we can put together um, a package of books which are delivered every month. And uh, yeah, you can still read the library books um, that you you love that you used to. So mm. and do you collect them again, presumably? Yes, um, um, and yeah. when your courier drops them off, um, the new ones you'll pick up the the ones you finished. Yeah, um, you can get DVDs that way as well. So we have some people that get a mixture of books and DVDs. You can get audio books, mm. anything from our physical collection. Yeah. How are libraries going these days? Because there's a big hoo-ha about National Library reducing its um, collection. Yes. Um, how are you finding funding and use of the library? Are people still using libraries? They're using libraries. Um, sometimes they seem busier than ever, but mm. they're using them in different ways. So yeah. it's more of a public space for some people. We have community groups that regularly meet in the library. Um, yesterday we had the, the knitting group and the mahjong group upstairs in the activities area. We've got a meeting room that can be booked online. Um, yeah, uh, We also do something called Skinny Jump, which is um, a service in conjunction with Spark. So uh, people who don't have the internet at home and who are perhaps on a, a tight budget can get a really cheap basic deal um, through Skinny Jump and they come in, we talk them through the, the process, set them up online so that they've got to log in and give them a modem to take home. Wow. Yeah. So they can access the internet from home too? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And you educate them? We have to. Um, some people, you know, pretty much know what to do, but mm. others need a bit more of a talking through. Yeah. And, and you, you know, we're there if they have questions. And also Skinny Jump um, are happy for people to um, ring them and, and ask questions as well. So it's much more than what people think a library is. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we partnership up with lots of community groups and, mm. and, you know, try and work together. Yeah. I honestly think that Hastings District Libraries, you know, because that's where I live, I live in Havelock, so just the most amazing services and um, Hastings Library is huge so you know there's all sorts going on upstairs all the time. Yes it's, it's a busy mm. wee place yeah mm. lots of book groups as well um, yeah people playing Scrabble. Um, yeah My, that Minecraft club as well. Oh yes there's some really good things for kids mm. um, yeah tea, um, tea with Tales which is uh, a group for um, people with uh, that's in conjunction with the Blind Foundation so uh, that's happening in the Wattie Room once a month. Um, Is that like a read aloud? or? Yes, we, yeah. they, they come in and, and read bits out. That's um, cool. A couple of librarians read yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So where do you access all this information if you think, right, okay, I'm really interested and I need to find out what's going on at the library. Where's the best place to look? Um, the library website, probably, um, hastingslibraries.co.nz. Cool. Yeah. It's a very easy to use website um yeah it's got databases on it as well mm. so if you want to find stuff out we've got something called press reader and you can access newspapers and magazines from all over the world via press reader yeah um ancestry 
and uh, Find My Past are two genealogy services that mm. you can um, access as well. Yeah. So there's no need to be bored, is there? There really isn't. So, uh, yes. If you've got a spare um, minute or two, have a look at the website. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And so we've got about five minutes left. Um, what are you reading at the moment? Um, I've just finished an Eve Chase novel called The Wildling Sisters. And um, it's one of those country house mystery novels where um, you've got a young family moving into an old house but the house has a secret mm -hmm. and the secret goes back to 50 years before when a young girl disappeared and there's a river and there's standing stones um, it's, it's a, it was a really good read I've been following Eve Chase on Twitter for a while and then I suddenly thought oh she's written this book and I was just staring at it on the shelf and I thought <laughs> I must read this because she's quite funny on Twitter um, yeah really does, liked it does that come through in the book is there humor in there through the characters no not really at all it's like she's a different person entirely that's interesting, isn't it? Because like you were saying about, you know, Ellen and her taxidermy. Yeah. You don't have a house full of taxidermy. No. And that's what writers do, isn't it? They imagine. So I suppose that's the, the correlation there. So what do you think about houses as characters in a book? Oh, I love them. I, I think I'm quite interested in that, even in my own writing, the atmosphere of the place. And mm. um, yes, I, I really love those English settings for those old country houses and cottages by the sea and... Um, things like that yeah houses hold mysteries don't they they do yeah I quite like it I've just read a children's novel and it something's just popped into my head it's um set in the second world war and it ends up in Stalingrad it's the, it's the red army is the they're the heroes of the piece for a change wow. I know um so they end up in Stalingrad and uh, a little boy meets a little girl who's living all by herself because her parents have died and there are this violets on the wallpaper and the, just the way he describes it and how she's had to tear off bits of the wallpaper to try and write notes, you know, Mama, I'm alive. And she's left them all around Stalingrad, you know, oh, in case wow. her mum happens to see it. So she comes home for her. So, um, yeah, houses and bits of them, I think, are, are just as important as the people sometimes, aren't they? Sometimes they are. Mm. So what's your favourite? Do you have a favourite genre? Hmm. Um, I've been reading a lot of historical fiction this year. Um, it's quite nice to go back into the past when the future, you know, the present's a bit shaky. Yeah. You're not sure about the future. True. So, um, <laughs> yes, I have read quite a lot. Um, I, lo I love mystery novels as well. Mm. Um, and anything quirky and humorous. Um, recently, Claire Chambers, um, she was long-listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction with um, Small Pleasures. And I, it was really neat for me to see her because I thought she was a forgotten author and suddenly her old books are being re-released. And she writes a lovely kind of quirky, humorous kind of um, story. But mm. the new book is a historical book and has quite a, a big emotional punch, so it's a bit different. This mm. week. But um, yeah, I like that sort of thing. Mm. And Tyler. Um, yes, those sorts of I do like Anne Tyler. Yeah. And it's that sort of um, simplicity of writing as well, isn't it? With, yeah. with writers like Anne Tyler. That, do they just put things very simply and, let, and trust the reader to, to tease it out? Mm. Yeah. Yes. That's rather gorgeous. It is. Yeah. Um, so just to go back to the whole point of why we came here, so we want everyone to come to Wine and Book Lovers Night. That's right, Wine yeah. Books and More Book Lovers Night. Um, it's a long title, but it, uh, we have a book group called Wine Books and More on a Tuesday night. Mm. So we thought we'd just tie the, those two things in together a bit. And because there's wine and there's books mm. and, and more. So yeah. yeah, on the 24th of November, 6.15. Yeah, and it's lovely to have um, something to look forward to, isn't it? A community event to look forward to in a safe and welcoming environment. I think that's great. That's great so, too. Thanks so much, Judith. Judith McKinnon, uh, librarian, writer, and so much more. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Oh, cheers. So you've been listening to Made in New Zealand on Radio Kidnappers.